Hello everybody, welcome back to Language Litigation and Integration Part 59, The Complete Narration Life Cycle. Last episode I told you I was going to do some very, very important and profound research into, or it was broken down beta male society. Again, for the tenth millionth time, I'm a scapegoat. I'm not an alpha male in any fucking way. Yes, I'm very intelligent. Again, I only have 35 subs. I'm not super popular, so the, the epic amount of research that's literally done on people's desks, it doesn't exist. It just doesn't count. Doesn't count. No, no, no baroonies. But I'm going to break down the complete narration, what people say to themselves in their heads as they waste their entire lives away. And then Governor Mike DeWine continues to violate basically every every known scientific principle and proof that has ever existed. So I'll talk about our great governor here in the state of Ohio, who's an absolute crackpot and an absolute motherfucking weirdo, and he's actually actively hurting my family. So shout out Mike, Governor Mike DeWine, what an absolute pile of fucking shit you are. But first and foremost, breaking down an individual, beta male or female, how they talk to themselves throughout their life age 7 to 12. Be told you can do anything you want in life. Have all these crazy dreams, go to schools, feel all of this potential for your future life. You're just, you just, you're just the specialist, most special, super special human being that ever lived. And you're just going to go do all of these crazy big things and all of this great awesome stuff's going to happen. You go to school and get told education matters, when it does, but you're not actually getting one. Right? Again, you just go sit in front of middle-aged men and women who bitch and complain through you and you know, they complain about, oh, I don't make enough money, and I should be paid more. And so you really start picking up on that body language. You, you get more, the education gives more how to, again, body language, how to, how to be pathetic around other people and get what you want. Then you make friends at school. I will, still, I will certainly only become emotional liabilities later on. Again, just people to use you when it's easy and convenient. Hey, man, we played games this day, went to school here. What's up? What's going on? Buy something. Would you like to join my multi-level marketing scheme? But you, then you play games all day and learn to compete over nothing from body language of your elders. Again, all those sports parents that really think playing games all day matters when they know it doesn't, they just don't feel any responsibility for anything. Age 7 to 12 is really when you start learning this behavior from, from, from actions. Actions speak louder than words still. Actions still have consequences. Then age 13 to 18, you go through high school while your parents and their friends gossip about everything you do. Who you date, who you hang out with, they want you to have the right friends, because again, they're going to teach you all the shit they didn't know, and they're going to do all these things, it's going to be super fucking awesome. You get pestered um, by, by your family members to say you're going to be a doctor or a lawyer, because those are the two respectable buzzwords in this society, to validate your parents' gossip that higher education matters. Because remember, all these people... They want you to do well, they don't want you to do better than them, and they went to college and they have to validate that experience by you going to college, or telling themselves that it matters or it got something going, and it literally just doesn't. Begin whoring around males and females because you're an entitled individual with no values while lying to yourself about what you're doing. Again, any manipulation of the concept of sex for personal attention is the definition of what a whore is, male and female. And so, this is when you, you've learned to play all game, blank games, age 7 to 12, you've learned to compete over nothing, and now you go through puberty, everyone wants to fuck, everyone wants a relationship, it's basic biology, so, but now you're still so selfish that you don't really care who you manipulate, who you hurt, who you do this, blah, 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 stuff like that. Graduate high school, and you see how vapid and empty your friendships were as everyone starts bitching about adulting. Okay, now... You went from that age of everything's possible, you can do anything you want in life, and then the only real thing that matters in life is to make money so you can stabilize your life, which again remains literally impossible for me, but anybody with a basic skill set can do so. But you just spend your entire time not actually generating real skill sets, just listening to middle-aged people tell you about some facts from middle European history. Some good stuff like the, the, the buttresses on middle evil architecture, but no one taught you how to have a trade or file your taxes or do something. So. This is when you really start seeing that at the end of high school. And then a lot of people who go to college will start getting blacked out, intoxicated, and call it partying. I, I vehemently hate partying as a term for just going to get absolutely fucking wrecked. It's, a, it's the worst fucking excuse word ever. It's just being primitive and degenerate behavior in a group, of, in a, in a group setting. Age 19 to 23, you'll go to college or you'll get a job and enter a period of selfish career hopping and think of it, thinking everything is super serious and really destroy any previous relationships over sayings like, 
We're all living our own lives. I have to do it for my family. I have to focus on myself when you're too selfish to give a fuck about anything. So this is again, really where I got the, the great scapegoatage. Get yeah, everyone's skin. Everyone's out here doing their own thing. Every university is connected. Every professional career is connected. The whole world's connected. It's a small world. Everyone's stealing my property, but we're all here doing different things. Again, maybe you'll work for an insurance company. Maybe you'll work for a credit card transaction processing company. Maybe you'll work for Facebook or YouTube and you just violate the First Amendment. Maybe you go sell some dog shit products that's going to break in two to three weeks, but at least you get a commission. And you start really you start seeing the competition at the start of the family level. And everyone's out here for themselves. And this is really when, again, you're still so underdeveloped that you're just so selfish and you're still whoring around and you don't care about anything. But now, now it's now's when money comes into play and you really have to get this done. You maybe have a kid in this time frame and definitely stop any personal development. Because right, you could have you could have spent every day after school your entire life, or every day at school your entire life, developing skill sets that would make you money, but you don't. You just kind of take tests all day, and now by the time 19 to 23, you're either going to college or working, and your personal development literally stops. Age 24 to 45, you'll graduate college and enter the world of mid-level managers, which we've covered extensively. You then realize you have no applicable skill sets, no jobs or fun jobs. When you were in the younger years, I already told you, find a job you love and you'll never work one day in your life. And then you realize the whole point of working is to make money, so you just want to make money as efficiently as possible, but you have no fucking skill sets and everyone's clamoring over, clamoring over each other like a box of hamsters. Again, maybe you're, maybe you're a recruiter, where your whole job is literally just to find people who can actually do stuff, not actually do the shit yourselves. And you have too much real life responsibility to develop any skills, even though you have plenty of time. Right. Two hours a day, two years, you'll be able to do something to make enough money in a world with YouTube, with Masterclass, with anything online, Twitch, Steam, whatever. But you'll lie to yourself in this period. you say, oh, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, I have no time for anything, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. And you're so busy because you don't want to do anything. You're really trying to figure out the adult thing, how to cook, how to clean, how just to run a household, even though that's kind of what the whole point of fucking school should be. But then you're just, again, you're just out of the world, you're just fucked. Then you get married, probably to someone you don't really like that much, or because you feel socially pressured. Maybe you have some kids, you realize you're too immature to bond with your spouse or your kids because you're selfless and insecure. They'll say stuff like, there'll be a new parent and be like, yeah, this, is not, this isn't the fun period anymore. Because again, when you, when you stick your dick into a vagina and come and a baby pops out, it's going to have to grow up too. But you didn't really like think about that, you just wanted to have a kid and have all the fun stuff or the love or the family or whatever, but you don't realize it's still biology. So then you make up shitty jokes with all of your other society mates and saying stuff like, oh, it's just not so fun, they cry so much, like, yeah, no fucking shit, guys. But again, I want to know, I want to have a kid. I've never had sex, I've never been close to a relationship. But again, you really can't bat bond with your spouse or anything, you just kind of got married as a social pressure. So you either then cheat or you get a divorce, then post, I'm not, quote, I'm not looking for my next ex-husband on Tinder. I honestly have seen this quote like five or six fucking times. And I'm trying to understand what this quote means. I am not looking for my next ex-husband. There's a lot of negation in there. Let's try the positive. I am looking for my next ex-husband. So you're looking to marry somebody in a relationship that you know is going to fail off the bat. So you're not looking for your next ex-husband. So you're not looking for someone that's going to fail right later off the bat. But you say it in a context where it's like, I'm not looking for a serious relationship. So it's like, I'm not looking for my next ex-husband would be kind of the weirdest way to say you're looking for an actual relationship, but you're trying to be edgy and cool and use logic wrong. Again, I've seen this quote word for word literally like five, six, seven times, and I just have, what the fuck does that mean, LOL. But logically, it's, it's, it literally means I'm not looking for my next ex-husband. You just say, I'm looking for my husband. That's logically what it means, but semantically it's supposed to be like, I'm not looking for a serious relationship, even though I have no understanding of the words I just wrote down, even though words have meaning, I'm just trying to sound cool. Really awesome stuff. You then tell your kids to enjoy childhood as you regret every night you wasted getting trashed to satisfy your primitive callings of sex and power in your previous years. Right? Now you're going to teach your kids that everything's possible again in their grade school time. And really you just want them to enjoy their life and have fun before they start working. Even though, again, you should be able to have one side job before you actually have to enter the career and you won't give a fuck about your career in any way at all. But once you start doing this at 
24 to 45, you have too many real life responsibilities, so you just start dumping that onto your kids. Age 46 to 70, you probably go through a midlife crisis and continue to compete over your children as they start careers of their own. You'll pester your own children about grandchildren because you want attention from kids without the responsibility of raising them. This is very important for most grandparents. They, right, all of the people that, this isn't the fun pie, oh, the terrible twos, my kid's crying, he's pooping, he's awake. Yeah, that's what they do. But now you're a grand, and you were never mature enough there, so now your kids are going to have a kid, and so you're just not going to have to deal with that, but you still get the funds and love and attention of a child. So that's, this is a really important uh, aspect. Maybe develop a severe disease and die because you ignored aches and pains over the years to tough it out. Um, you really start thinking for the first time. Again, our not die, reproduce, think. And up until 46 to 70, it's just primitive, reproduce, get a career, get a family. Um, uh, you really start thinking oh, for yourself about by advocating politics, politics, religion, or other dumb shit you don't really fucking understand when it's historical or linguistics or mathematics or science, because again, all you did in college was black the fuck out and cheat and actually never got an education. That's such an important part of this whole thing, is people are actually not educated. They just have access to information and they, so they think they're educated. Super cool stuff. You harass the children you had, but neglected, to speak well about you in your later years, as you say, that never happened, but all the shit you know happened, as they make memes about it and post it on Reddit. Go look around. Go, go look on the Reddit. Find it yourself. <laughs> So now age 71 to 120, you sink into old age while remaining in complete denial you wasted most of your life chasing a career that does not fucking matter. How many people give away estates and they just go melt them down and sell them? So all that jewelry you earned, that big house, no one fucking cares. And everyone knows before that no one cares about finding materialistic things. But from the primitive nature of self-validation, you need, you need that career validation of you put yourself out there and you get some money. And then, you, and then you keep chasing it because there's no real end to innovation, but you can't innovate, and then it's just like, nice, so you just kind of run away, or run, run around in a circle doing the same shit. Um, you gossip about your kids and grandchildren to continue validating your insecurities. It's getting nothing, no one's grown up, no one's educated. And this, everyone in this group is over the hill, all getting closer to death than to life, but they're still mature, immature, and they've never educated themselves, never once. Um, Realize you're a pro this is this is important. You then realize at this point, 71 to 120 years of age, you realize you're a prime age for working for public positions, such as Speaker of the House, President, Judges, because yep, even though you're fucking close to dying, you, you, for public positions, even though you're definitely dying soon. But again, you want to contribute now, you kind of have your career, you're, you took, you took about 70 years to do what an average 25 to 30 year old should be able to do if you're not in a completely stagnated society. But this is the prime time to go run for public office. This is when, again, you're going through getting dementia or dying soon. This is the prime time to be a leader. Um, you, you fuck up the country a little bit with your public position. You wipe your hands clean. Congratulate yourself. Pat yourself on the back on a life well lived and die. And then finally, this is the last important step, your children will fight with each other over your estate because nothing has changed emotionally and maturity wise. And then you will repeat this cycle for about 500 years because no one fucking cares. And so that is the complete psychological breakdown of a lifetime narration of a person in privileged society. Right? People who think they're never going to die and they functionally act like it. Again, I've watched, again, everybody I've ever met do this. Every single fucking person. Not, not, not 99%, 100 fucking percent. And so, all of that, again, to get back to my, my, great, my great colleague, Mr. Governor Michael fucking DeWine. Just some quotes, the guy, again, all, again I don't write these down, these are things just sticking in, out in my head as, as scientific insecurity, inconsistency, and again, I, this is how I do millions of mathematical logical theorems, literally fucking millions. But my, Governor DeWine, again, a great, great character. Republican, I don't know, he probably associates with Christianity, even though Jesus absolutely hot boxing at any point in time is 100% cannabis, 100 fucking percent. But you just kind of get, do, do whatever inconsistent thing and call yourself the governor. Go get elected. You see, he's, he chased his career, man. The first step to being a politician is wanting fucking power, wanting fucking influence, wanting fucking whatever. And so, a selfish ass piece of shit named Michael DeWine says, I am not a scientist. And this is during one of his shit COVID things. 
Probably with Amy Acton and get another great, great intellectual. She wasn't elected by public office. I don't give a fuck. If you're a scientist, that, 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 is, that, is, that is more important than whatever worthless fucking election you won. If you call yourself a scientist. But Mike DeWine says he's not even a scientist. He admits it himself at his own fucking press conference. In the same types of time frames, he also says the buck stops with me. First of all, what the fuck does that mean? The buck stops with me? That's not even a correct, like, logical statement. But you can just say random words and hope the other dumb fucks somehow agree with the sentiment of whatever you said, the connotation of whatever you said, even though the words make no fucking sense. But then yesterday, literally right after I got done uploading yesterday's episode, I get on TV and I see this worthless fuck who says he is not a scientist, who is demonstrably incompetent, who violates his own fucking laws. I can have a cannabis card or I can have a gun to protect myself. I can eat or sleep at night or I can defend myself. It's either or here, guys. You can pick like one or two rights and then you can literally get, you can't protect yourself or you can't eat food or you can't sleep or you can't take care of your fucking family's health. I'm the most accomplished scientist that has ever walked on this fucking planet. And Mike DeWine is in a place of political power. And in yesterday, paraphrasing, he says, Can dot, 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 cannabis for everyone, kind of question mark. We know that's just not fucking true. Michael DeWine, you are in direct violation of scientific proof. The result of that is dead people, like your fucking daughter Becky. I know she died in a car accident, but at least that's one less person. One less person to pick up your shitty body language and teach it to your grandchildren. I hope your grandchildren have wonderful lives, and I hope they listen to me and not to you. You don't know how to fucking behave, old man. You have no fucking idea how to behave. You're not a scientist, so stop making scientific claims. And it's, it's a 100% it's a what happens. People are in a position of power, they want to have opinions, they have to speak directly, they put in their insecurity, and they say, don't do something. Denial. It's scientific denial, and it's killing people. I have people in my family in, with severe health conditions where, again, I've proven these things. Proven. Most people don't ever get a PhD. Most people get a PhD never become professors. Every professor on this planet cannot keep up together collectively with my exact scientific output. Keep up! Again, I don't care who lives or fucking dies. I am trying to keep my family alive in my own fucking health. I can't grow cannabis here. I can't fucking get paid to leave to go to a state with that isn't just dog shit fucking idiot Republicans. And I'm not a Democrat. I don't do politics. I have a brain. I fucking think. I prove things. I don't give a fuck about my own opinion. I give a fuck about facts. And so again, keep, keep saying shit like this. Your legacy is scientific denial and killing people, Michael DeWine. You utter bucket of fucking trash. Again, just trying to keep my family's privacy intact. But again, I'm riding, riding in a car with one of my family members with a severe, severe disease. This absolutely... Uh, would benefit without fucking scientific question. Prove it. There's proof on the internet. You guys have no idea how to understand, look at data, literally at all. And, and my family member goes to me, if cannabis was, if teaching cannabis as a whole was like good, it would be out there. And again, my family member is telling me this definitively. Beta males love to assert authority over you and then say, prove me wrong! And I can't keep my fucking family alive. I can't keep my family alive. People are gonna. This is history, boys and girls. You people are disgusting. Humanity is fucking disgusting. You have to learn to change your behavior or die the fuck off. It has to happen because people will not change. Cannabis for everyone. We know that's just not true. Michael DeWine, you're going to go to jail for a long fucking time, and I hope it's for fucking life. And I will see to it that happens. John Kasich will as well. If you run for public office. At this point in human history, and you make statements like this as a political governor. You also said, I'm not a scientist, Michael DeWine, so please reconcile these statements for me. Where is this data coming from? Your racket at OSU Medical? Put me in a room with scientists, and I will fucking sit there. You will viscerally perceive proofs. I won't speak one fucking word. Can't take care of my own health, can't take care of my family's health. And this is the shit that I heard yesterday on TV. Part 59. More millions of theorems, tens of thousands of empirical logical proofs. Mike DeWine probably can't, didn't graduate eighth grade algebra. And then, and then, and then the next, again, the next, the next narrative is Riza. You feel, you feel happiness when people pass away against broken ass fucking society. So Michael DeWine again, I can't say fuck you enough. I really just fucking can't. And I'll see. I will visit you in motherfucking prison and, and friend one. 
Why would you fuck a person like this? Why would your pussy get wet and you want to start a family with a human being like that? Oh, you probably you have no values either. So, Governor Mike DeWine, fuck you in the most genuine, honest, scientific, legal way possible. Can't wait to prosecute you, you worthless fuck. So, thank you for watching the complete narration life cycle. Again, this, this got me fired up yesterday. I'm stuck in this hideous ass backwards, scientifically illiterate state where people don't raise their families, they don't give a fuck at all, and then they just put their insecurities on other people. I'll do one more s s story episode soon, and just keep doing talking points. Anything else for today? Let me make sure I'm still rolling. Oh, another, there's another good quote. Governor Whit Whitner, or whatever the fucking Michigan governor is, and I are betting on the OSU Michigan State game. So I'm glad you guys are again just betting on games where kids smash each other's heads in together, and then we say cannabis isn't for everyone, even though anti inflammation is pretty much the prime st stabilizing mechanism of cannabis entirely. So I hope every single player, I hope. Michigan, Michigan wins and every single player gets fucking concussions and CTE. Because people who are this fucking stupid I have no respect for literally at all. I just don't fucking care. And so, enjoy, enjoy football and smashing your head together like absolute fucking animals. Like absolute fucking animals. But, uh, just a couple notes. I saw Ben Shapiro giving all negative movie reviews. Just a video he has up on his channel the past day or two about movie previews. He literally has not a single one that's like, yeah, this looks like a good movie. He, he literally reviewed like six or seven in the last one was like, maybe this is the one we'll take the kids to because it's Christian. And just, just Ben Shapiro, take your fucking yarmulke off, you fucking absolute historical goofball, man. Do what is right. Do you think any religious figure of any real stature would have any fucking respect for someone who doesn't do what the fuck is right without fucking question? Now you're going to raise your kids to be good or something. But more importantly, my point is, is again, the movies keep you entertained, modestly entertained, for an hour and a half to two and a half hours, and you get a good review from me, genuinely. It's kind of the point of a fucking movie. But it's just everything that's like, that doesn't look good, that doesn't look good, that doesn't look good, that doesn't look good. We know that's not true. We doubt that. We don't think that. We can't do this. We don't understand. We don't do that. Einstein's manuscripts sell for $13 million. <laughs> and I destroyed 1,300 poems while being a security guard. Just a quick story, after Susan and I broke up, I was an unarmed security guard for a summer. And again, because I literally could not fucking sleep, and if I did not have access to cannabis, I would 100% have been dead, because I could not sleep. Literally fucking not sleep, and not eat. And if you can't do that, you die. That's what happens. But just sit in a place of privilege, Michael DeWine, and just do whatever the fuck you want with your disgusting fucking state. Pay me my money, let me defend my property, release my property, so I can leave this fucking hellhole. But the the I just I was an armed security guard because I couldn't sleep at night, and I would literally just write poems and then just tear them up and throw them the fuck away. Just literally just tear them up and throw them away. Create, destroy, create, destroy, create, destroy. Each all of my first drafts of all of my theorems now I'm destroying. So I mean, you were literally watching people burning up the 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 the, the Library of Alexandria. There's going to be people that are Sean Carroll and Ed Whitten and. David Eisenberg, but that actually give a fuck in the future. And it's just being burned today, as it happens. So I hope, I hope you guys, Governor DeWine and Whitmer, I hope you guys win on whoever wins the big football game. Ha ha ha. And just keep destroying humanity. Honestly and for fucking real. But Einstein's manuscript sell for $13 million. Why destroy theorems left and fucking right? And again, that was just a quick story about being a security guard. I mean, nothing super interesting. But... Well, I can't collect $12 million that's owed to me yesterday, again, to tr defraud it out of trillion dollars of wealth, and I'm just trying to fucking leave so I can start a family of my own. And it's not possible. It's really not fucking possible. Whew. So, yep, yeah, there's, there's another great episode. Again, Governor DeWine, you make me so fucking pissed off, and you're such a scientifically illiterate piece of shit. All right. Shakespeare or whoever said there, or Mark Twain said they don't wish anybody death, but they certainly laugh at or chuckle at obituaries. I will celebrate obituaries, and I will never incite violence, but besides that, stay the fuck away from me. Animals. Animals that have no idea how to behave. Again, I'm going to do a lot of language translations. Just, again, this is all proof. Every single bit of this video is a proof. There's a lot of different sections, a lot of syllables, and a lot of it to get through. But, 
I'm continuing to work through my work. I'm continuing to not have money being paid. I, the, there's no human rights organization on this planet that will, that will take me seriously saying I cannot eat and sleep because of treason, and I can't. So whenever this fucking shit stops, in my RICO video said I'm not going to name negligence, every case, every charge, every politician and law enforcement, full fucking sentences, I'm going to purge the fucking earth of you fucking diseased people. You don't do your jobs. Laws not enforced are not laws. Rights not given are not rights. They're just not. And uh, I can't start a family. Governor DeWine, why do you deserve to have a family and I do not? Why, well, okay, okay. Well, why, why do I deserve to have a family when you allow me to? It's been five fucking years of treason. It's been nine years of, of profound torture. No one knows. No one cares. No one gives a fuck. No one cares at all. Enjoy, enjoy your football game, MSU and OSU fans, you lazy, disgusting families. Um, thanks for watching Language Litigation and Integration Part 59, The Complete Narration Life Cycle.